Hi everyone, welcome back to Unicorn Desk Designs. Today we are gonna be working on four mason jar DIYs. I hope you love them and let's get straight into it. For this DIY, we're starting with a mason jar and some black flat, flat black spray paint. I wanted to try a different, different paints out. So this was the, obviously the spray paint. Now I'm taking a damp chip brush and I am dipping it in my Waverly white chalk paint and I am dry brushing this on. I wanted to stress, I wanted to add a lot of dimension to this and I am doing this in real time because there are some crafters out there that are new. So I just wanted them to see how you go about doing this. So as you can see, I have the lightest amount of products on this brush. You can't even see that there is white on this paintbrush y'all. Like, that's how light of a coat you want. Cause remember, you could always go back in with more. So start off light, go soft. And then if you, it's not enough for you, then put some more on your brush and then add a little extra, you know? Okay, so now our wood sign. This is a six by 24 wood sign. And initially I had stained it uh, vintage white, but it just wasn't popping the way I wanted it to. So we're gonna paint the front, the back, the sides, all of that. And then after we let that dry, Hanky wanted to come say hi to everyone, my good boy. I'm gonna take a sanding block. You could get sanding blocks at any hardware store. You could even get them at Dollar Tree. And I am just going around the edges and distressing this down. And then I'm also going to sand the top to kind of bring that wood grain through our chalk paint. So after we're done with that, we're gonna go ahead and clean that up. Voila, you could see that wood grain, it looks beautiful. And now I'm taking, this is like a suede. I don't know if it's used for jewelry or what. I have a bunch of it. And I had set my mason jar on there for reference. That way we know how far up or down we're gonna put things. And make sure to put the flowers in it so you know. All right, so now on the back of this, I am attaching it with hot glue. So I do actually go over it with a staple gun. And if you are selling these, do it that way because it is more security that way that these aren't going anywhere but initially i was like oh am i keeping this am i selling this i don't know so sorry that wasn't in frame but all i'm doing is wrapping it around and then i'm going to take the staple gun because i was like well what if i want to sell this so then i staple it now if you are going to staple make sure you tie little knots at the end of the string that way it can't pull through the staple once you are done there, we are going to add our decal. Now, I did get this decal on um, the Cricut Access Design Design Access or whatever, so I can't sell it, unfortunately. But get creative. There are tons of stencils out there that would look amazing with this. And I used the painter's tape as my guide to keep a straight line. Peeled that off. Then we're going to go ahead and take Folk Art in Rich Black and we're going to take a sponge roller. I love using sponge rollers because they put on the paint nice and smoothly and they don't add texture to it and it also helps with no bleeds underneath your stencils. So with this black chalk paint, y'all, you only have to do one coat and it is like pitch black. I absolutely love it. And then we're gonna go ahead and dry this down. And just for like purposes of the video, I did use my heat gun. However, I highly recommend using cool like air from a blow dryer if you're trying to speed it up because uh, chalk paint has a tendency to crack. So after we are done doing that, we're gonna go ahead and take our vinyl off, the most fulfilling part of painting with a stencil. Wow, look at those gray hairs. Oh my gosh, Woo. Okay, anyway, so this says sunshine and whiskey served here, and I thought this was the cutest image on Cricut. Like, hello, this is so cute. So make sure you have a very sharp weeding tool. That way you don't have to gouge your wood out. If you have a sharp weeding tool, it should lift that vinyl right up for you. All right, so now turning it over, we need a way to hang it. So we're gonna go ahead and use a sawtooth hanger. And a sawtooth hanger is great because in the front, there's gonna be an even weight distribution, so you don't have to worry about it leaning to one side. You can get sawtooth hangers at Walmart or on Amazon. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our little holder. To be honest, I do not know what this is called. I grabbed it out of my husband's uh, garage. So I drilled a hole in that. Then I came over to the board found my center point in the board 
and then we are gonna pre-drill a hole in our wood. And this is just gonna help it make it so easier to put our screw in. So now putting the screw through our little holder, we're gonna screw that in tight, and then we can go ahead and attach our mason jar. And then you just screw that up tight. Easy peasy, y'all. This is my favorite. This is my favorite. I love it. And yeah, look at how amazing this turned out. Sorry about my red walls. Okay, you guys, but this is gorgeous. If you sell wood signs or have a wood sign business, these would be so easy to turn over in your business or just gifts or just for yourself. This was so easy to create. And I hope you guys love it as much as I do. Ooh, I love it. Hi everyone, I hope you enjoyed that first mason jar DIY. I was super excited to make these for you guys. I always say super excited, eh, whatever. Uh, because I have so many mason jars like piled up and you don't even need the mason jars. You could be using salsa jars or you know the Alfredo jars or whatever you have on hand, you can use those. I just have so many that I was like, why not? This would be fun. So I hope you guys enjoy all of them. Um, I also wanted to take a minute to really stop and say thank you to all of you subscribers who support me and who leave me the kindest, most encouraging comments that I could ever be blessed to read. Um, I really truly feel so amazing to know that I have this community of people that stand behind me and support myself and my dreams and my goals. And I couldn't have a channel. I couldn't be here without you all. So I just want you guys to know how much I really do appreciate you. I appreciate every time you like a video, every time you comment, when you share my videos with other people, um, I, I really appreciate that. And I think those of you that have been with me for a while know like how sincere that is and that it really truly comes from my heart. I probably said really truly like a lot of times, but I really do mean it. So I just wanted to say thank you guys very much for being here, for always watching my videos and for the continued support that you guys show me on a daily basis. So with all of that mess stuff, let's go ahead and get back into the rest of the DIYs. All right, for this one, we're going to be using the Rust-Oleum Chiffon Chalk Paint. I have to say that the Rust-Oleum glides on so much smoother and more evenly than the Waverly um, chalk paint does. So if you use like creams, whites, and grays often, I highly recommend just getting the cans of Rust-Oleum. I absolutely love the way this turned out. So I'm just using my folk art paintbrush. I got it from Walmart. Two pack is like under seven. Put two coats on, let it dry. Now I'm taking Antique Wax by Waverly and we are going in with a chip brush, dabbing it in the lid, then dabbing it on our pad. Again, just getting the lightest amount of product on our brush because you could always go back in. So we are distressing this. We're giving it some dimension, some depth. It just, it looks so good with a piece of wood we're gonna put it with y'all. And then look at how beautiful those letters look once you put that over it. Oh, stunning. And you could also clear these with like clear spray paint or Mod Podge if you choose to. I did not do that though, because I'll probably be keeping all these. So this is weathered wood that I got from Facebook Marketplace. Knew I had to use it, but this stuff was on its last leg. Like it was about to crack in half. So I got this Starbond crack filler and I've used it before on smaller projects, but like y'all, this was like almost cracked all the way through that it was gonna just crumble, break in half. So I was like, let me just see if I can save this. So all you do with this stuff is you put it in the crack. Obviously I'm putting a lot cause it's going all the way through this piece of wood. And then I am putting the spray on and this dries the product within five seconds. It's like an accelerator. And this thing did not budge. If you are someone that works with wood a lot, I highly recommend this. And they're in different tints. So this one's like, a light brown, they have a dark brown and like a black. And y'all, I didn't intend to like be like, hey, buy this, you know, on my video or anything. I just 
happen to like need it in these videos because I use it again and it's mind blowing, okay? Because this is the other side that was cracking as well, filled up that crack and it wasn't going anywhere. So I was super excited. Okay, so enough with that. Now we need to attach this, okay? So we are basically making a little shelf. And what I'm gonna do next is we need to screw this little shelf on here. So there were two parts of this piece of wood that didn't have any cracks and that's where I wanted the screws to go through. So I kind of measured out where those pieces of the wood were. And now I'm gonna pre-drill some holes all the way through this piece of wood. There we go, one and two, voila. And then I'm gonna take this piece of wood and I'm gonna, no, I'm not gonna take this piece of wood. I don't know, you guys don't listen to me. Okay, yeah, I set it on top of the screws. I'm gonna put some screws in right now. Hello, okay, no, stop it. Okay, I'm putting the screws through just so there's a little bit sticking out of the other side of the wood, as you can see, hopefully. Then I'm gonna press the shelf onto those screws. That way it's gonna leave an indent in my wood and I'll know where I need to drill my other holes, okay? So this is just gonna make it easier for the screws to go in there. And then we will screw those right in, do it nice and tight, make sure you're getting all the way through that wood there. And this comes out so awesome and it's so simple. I mean, if you have scrap wood, if you have barn wood, I mean, anything, these are so beautiful to make and you don't have to put mason jars on it. You could put candles on them. You can put flower vases. I mean, the, the possibilities are endless. So we're gonna go ahead and attach sawtooth hangers again. Like I said, you could buy big packs at Walmart, on Amazon, super inexpensive. Now I'm taking our mason jar and I'm just adding some of this suede ribbon stuff. I, you guys, I don't know what it is, in blue. And then these are just dried flowers from Dollar Tree and some other flowers from Dollar Tree. And I can't wait to show you what it looks like. Look at how, I mean, that was so easy. This is such a rustic decor piece. I actually see me putting this in my bathroom by my sink with some photos and maybe like another little shelf for like my perfumes and stuff. But it's so beautiful and it was so easy to recreate. Y'all know the business. You gotta tell me which one's your favorite down below. And now we're moving on to some kitchen mason jars. So I had these three, two of them are the same, one of them's different, work with what you got, you know. And I am trying to take this adhesive off, so I'm just heating it up, then I'm gonna get a uh, baby wipe and some rubbing alcohol, and we're gonna clean those up. Of course, to get the adhesive off, but just before you paint, you should clean off your mason jars anyways. So this, I'm using the Blaster Waverly, and like I said, this stuff is so thick compared to the Rust-Oleum and I, I prefer the Rust-Oleum over the Waverly because it just goes on so thick and I thought it was like a lot more streaky and I was using the same paintbrush that I used on the previous one too. So anyways, we're gonna paint all three of these plaster and we're gonna do two coats on each one. Now we're gonna do a speckle effect. So I got this, uh, the Rich Black Folk Art Chalk Paint spritzed a little bit of water in it. I'm taking my synthetic apple barrel brush and I'm gonna show you it laying down and then I'm gonna, the rest of the time, I end up just standing it up and doing it. And then you'll see, I just take my finger and I'm just running it through the brush, creating these little speckles on here that look so beautiful. I, I love the way that these turned out and I wanna do them in more colors. So as you'll see, standing it up is a lot easier. And keep in mind, the more product you put on your brush, the, the bigger those speckles are going to be on your jar. So that's just about preference here. But I love, I love these. And the possibility, like imagine this for Easter too, like those speckled little eggs. How cute would that be? So look at that. 
Love how those turned out. Okay, so now I got these decals. They're from the Cricut Design Space again. And they reminded me of like the old school Pyrex dishes. And I just knew with the speckled look, it would just, they would be so adorable. So I'm just gonna put those on. This is with 651 permanent vinyl. Of course, you can use stencils and paint them on and then clear them and they'd probably last forever. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and finish these up. <laughs> I was like, uh, trying to keep them even. And then I'm gonna take Dollar Tree ribbon and I'm just tying it in a basic bow. I, I'm not trying to like make it look super pretty. I want them to look kind of uneven and just whimsical. Is that is that the right, I don't know. Okay, and then we're gonna finish that off with all three and then I'm gonna take the lighter and I'm just going to go ahead and scorch the ends of our ribbon so we don't have fraying. And these are so easy, look at this. You know what, these would also be by themselves without the decals or if you put something else on there really cute makeup um brush holders that would be adorable too i hope you guys like these you guys make sure to hit that like button and subscribe and share my videos and all those dollar tree you know groups okay all right okay all right i'm so glad that you guys are here with me okay so i got this uh cutting board at a garage sale for two bucks. Obviously somebody got like super happy with the permanent marker here, but I go outside, I sand that all down and it comes out beautiful. I'll show you that right now, maybe one day. Okay, here we go. So this was actually a really nice cutting board and it took off like a little bit of the darkness, but that was okay with me. I went ahead and I cleaned it off and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, attach this decal. Now I did create this one, so I will have it available for you in my Etsy shop. And it says, in this kitchen, we lick the spoon, which could not be more true. So this was so fitting and I'm definitely keeping this one for myself. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and peel that off. Usually I use my vinyl ease and I wish I would have used it here because this stuff was sticky and I did not want to come off of my stencil. Uh, vinyl. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and get the rest of this off. Then I'm going in with the same sponge roller that I used just a little bit ago and I'm doing my Rust-Oleum linen white and I'm going in with even coats and I'll do two coats of this just to, you know, get it nice and bright. We'll go ahead and take this off here. Oh, the satisfaction of like super clean lines just makes me so, so happy. And this, you guys, obviously, I know this, it's the skinny font and then um, addenda for the cursive. So now take it, this is actually an Alfredo mason jar and I'm just wrapping a bunch of twine around it and then I'll just hot glue that piece to the back. And then we're gonna take another piece and then we're gonna take another piece of twine and we are going to tie it around the bottom of the neck of the jar and you're going to tie this in a very tight knot okay so one two now we're going to take this up and i'm just kind of seeing placement where i want it to hang looks beautiful and i'm just tying a knot on the top so this is just going to hang on there just like that okay now y'all this thing gave me so many issues so okay here we go we find our center point I get this hook, right? Okay, everything's, I thought this was gonna be easy peasy, like just screw it in, girl's done. No, that's not the way it worked out for me. So I'm measuring up because I need to adjust it because of how it hangs. And then I get my drill and I pre-drill this and then I get my hooks and I'm, I'm turning it and I'm like, gosh, this is super tough. So then I get a rag and I'm like, okay, is this gonna help? No, nope, doesn't help. So then I get my pliers and I grab onto it with my pliers, right? Let's see, there we go. Well, the top breaks off y'all. So the screw part is stuck in the cutting board. I try to screw it out. It does not work. Like it is stuck in there and it won't go anywhere. Then I tried a bunch of other hooks, okay? And then do you see the big giant hole I created? Yeah, that was beautiful. So then I take this crack filler again, crack filler, that just sounds weird, but you know what I'm saying, um, from Starbond. And then I fill the hole again, use the accelerator. So it's dry, 
fill it up a little bit more because this, the hole in this got so deep because I tried a bunch. I just kept trying y'all, you know, that you just can't, don't give up. Would you just stop while you're ahead? No, that never happens for me. I got to push it. Okay. So that's okay. I could live with that blemish. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> that's fine. Flowers are going to cover it anyways, or the twine will. So then I go for it again. This time it works, okay? Pre-drill the hole. This time I go nice and slow and it works. It works. It worked, y'all. We're good. This was so easy. You could find a lot of um, cutting boards at like your Goodwill store, Habitat for Humanity, garage sales. You might have some. And this is how she came out. I, I even love it like in this spot and I cannot wait till my walls are painted. It's gonna look even better. But y'all, thank you so much for being here with me today. I hope you enjoyed these fun mason jar DIYs. Uh, make sure that you go check out my description box for all of my social media outlets. And I look forward to seeing you on my haul on Thursday. Bye. that tinsel. Hello. Oh, don't need the dander picking out, but dang, those are some shinies. Those are coloring my hair on Saturday. 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 Hi everyone, welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. Today, we are gonna be working on some mason jar DIYs. I'm very excited to bring this, no, okay. You're looking good though. What's up, sis? Okay, it still looks crooked, but okay. I know people are gonna ask. It says, holy enough to pray for you hood enough uh, to swing on you. There you go. <laughs> my girlfriend made them. She made all my graphic t-shirts. Now I need to make my own, I guess. <sighs> okay. What do I want to say? 